However much the groups of people being shown differ, they all have at least one thing in common. Each person is wearing an article of knitted clothing. The variety of clothing from knitted materials is surprisingly large. Dresses, jackets, shirts, bathing costumes, t-shirts, tracksuits, sweaters, sports supports, underwear, socks, and ladies' tights. If it looks a big jump, from the basic information in the first video to these garments, then we can simplify this transition by looking closely at a particular product from this machine, the sock or half hose machine. Socks are familiar to men of course, but they're also familiar to the ladies who seem to buy most of the socks. This is how a sock comes from the knitting machine. Sock has a one by one rib top, so we know that the machine must have two needle beds. The leg section is two by two rib, so the needles have been reprogrammed from one and one to two and two rib. The heel is knitted with a plain stitch, thus on one needle bed only, hence a further reprogramming of the needles has taken place. The heel and toe are only required in footwear, of course. The heel pouch is produced by gradually reducing the number of needles knitting to about half while knitting in a reciprocating manner. The needles are reintroduced until all of them are in action and circular knitting of the foot begins. The toe is produced in the same way as the heel. The closing of the open toe is the only sewing operation required. Where needles are selected repetitively for structural needs, one and one, two and two, to plane, as you can see here, the procedure is called machine programming. This sock also starts with a one by one rib, but instead of changing structure for the leg, a pattern is introduced by selecting individual needles to knit specific colours. The heel is plain structure and shaped as before. The foot has the pattern on the upper half only, while the lower part has the one by one rib. The toe is again a plain knit and shaped. This sock has the first type of programming, that is machine programming, but it also has a second kind called pattern programming, when the designer's drawing is changed into individual needle selection to produce the pattern on the sock. So we have established the two aspects of programming which may be applicable to all products. Machine programming and machine and pattern programming. Other knitting machines are capable of dual programming to produce parts of a complete garment. For example, this is a circular purl machine. This garment blank from the machine shows the 2x2 two two rib border at the bottom and the pattern area above. The RTR machine is another capable of dual programming, although it is quite common to produce garment blanks with structure changes only. These blanks with 2x2 two two rib border and 1x1 one one rib body are cut to shape to produce bodies and sleeves. It is of course quite possible to put the machine programming out of action and simply produce a continuous length of fabric which can be patterned, unpatterned or striped. Some machines are designed without the machine programming capability 
and produce only continuous rolls of fabric. Such machines are almost exclusively circular to achieve high productivity. Many, although not all, have a programming facility to produce patterns, such as this Bentley machine. To achieve this, individual needle selection is required. In this case, the pattern is computer generated and microelectronically controlled. Other circular machines have systems which are not able to select individual needles, but are able to achieve structure changes by picking out a particular needle arrangement for each successive group of courses. Perhaps the most simple example is the variant of a RUD machine known as the interlock machine. Interlock is a new term, so it will be helpful to look at the structure a little closer. The structure, as you would expect of one derived from a rib, is knitted on two needle beds, a flat circular plate at the top called a dial, and the usual circular cylinder below. For rib fabric, the tricks are staggered in rib gating but for interlock fabric, the tricks are set opposite each other in interlock gating. It is clear that each needle in each trick cannot knit every time, or the needles will smash. This is a simple diagrammatic convention which allows a sequence of knitted loops that make up a particular structure easier to understand. The small circles represent needles and the lines around the circles show the knitted loops. This is a view that would be seen when looking at the edge of the fabric. So for the first course, alternate needles in dial and cylinder knit, and then those needles that did not knit in the first course do so in the second. We have then an interlocked rib structure. This picture shows two examples of interlock fabrics knitted on different gauge machines. By selecting groups of needles to knit in sequence on successive courses, a whole range of structures can be produced. Common ones are Ponte Roma, Milano Rib and Double PK. These are the loop diagrams showing that the Ponte Roma is a mixture of interlock and plain knitting. The Milano rib has a first course of one by one rib and then a second and third course of plain knitting, first on a cylinder and then on the dial. The double PK has courses of plain knitting on alternate courses two and four on what is basically a two and one rib on courses one and three. We have